Welcome to Mary Ann's Kitchen. Pretend there's no camera. There's okay. no camera. Yeah. Okay. Just say it like I'm I'm cooking okay. and you see me taking all the pots and pans and clanging in the doors. Welcome to the cooking. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna be making my super bacon cheesy mac and cheese. Maybe some of you are thinking, awesome cheese. Maybe, but I would bet that around 65% of you are actually thinking, uh oh, dairy. We'll get to that. Oh, Lord. But first, let's get cooking. So, every mac and cheese needs, well, cheese. And milk. And cream, and half and half. Lots of half and half. Okay, like centuries worth of half and half. But that's a good thing, right? I mean, milk has calcium, and protein, and vitamins, and minerals. And I think we can all agree that it tastes objectively delicious. I mean, listen to that sizzle. Not too bad, right? Hold up. If milk is so incredible, why does it cause a majority of us so many problems? The math isn't mathing. And milk propaganda aside, we're all born with the ability to digest milk, right? So what's the deal? Where does it change and why? Turns out there's a lot of different factors that might affect our ability to digest dairy. But before we take a deep dive, we need to figure out what's going on here. So I went straight to the source. It's time to milk a goat. <laughs> okay, I'll walk normally, I'll walk normally. I was just, I was overthinking the walk. Today we're at Hope Goat Farm, where they've got piglets and alpacas and well, goats. A lot of goats. Like we are talking, like I don't know how they have so many goats, like Goat Central. Hi, oh my gosh, y'all will love this when you see this. <laughs> Aren't they so adorable? I hate <laughs> There's nothing I hate more than puns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some goat grain and then we will grab our first goat. Come on, Poppy. So we're gonna stick it right through here. Good girl. Mm -hmm. This calls for serious mode though, you know? The jacket comes off, the hair pulled back to focus. She's a feisty one. You're okay. You know, I've milked cows on a one, two switch, Nintendo switch, you know? So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making a mm -hmm. little bit of a ring. Okay. I'm gonna be placing that ring around the top of her nipple. Okay. Even farther up than you would think. Sometimes we have to hold the leg. Do I go under this way? Yeah, so you're gonna Ooh. make your ring and you're okay. Where's the udder again? Good maybe I'm not a good milker. I, maybe I'm not <laughs> high enough. Oh, maybe I'm gonna use yours. <laughs> that was a good one. Perfect! Oh, yeah. oh, there good we job. go! So how does this compare to the wee milking experience? <laughs> you know what? There's no pulling down, and the thing is that like with the wee, you don't need to care about the goat that is virtual. You just kind of Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm a milker! Okay, Poppy, bye! Oh, she said goodbye. <laughs> Who needs some goat milk? <laughs> it's a little hairy. Okay, I've got the milk. Now let's talk about what's in it. Specifically, let's talk about lactose. Lactose is a sugar found exclusively in the milk of mammals. It looks like this, and it's called a disaccharide because it's made up of two monosaccharides, glucose and galactose. Now, our bodies love glucose. It's what we use for energy. Energy. When lactose enters our body, we need to slice it up into glucose and galactose so that we can convert that glucose into energy. So, how do we do this? Well, our small intestines create an enzyme called lactase, which is what breaks up lactose. Sounds great, right? The only problem is, oftentimes once we grow up, our bodies aren't creating enough lactase anymore. So most of the time, lactose ends up entering the intestines without being broken down and then it gets converted into gas or fatty acids that mess with the internal pressure of the small intestine. And then, well, yeah. So 
the biggest thing between cow's milk and goat's milk is that these guys have a very high butterfat content. So cows have about a 3%, these guys can have 6 to 10% depending on what you're feeding them. So for that reason, it's great for skin care, but it's also great for anybody who has any lactose issues. Okay, so goat's milk might be a little bit more tolerable when it comes to lactose, but we still don't know why some people produce more lactose than others. So I still have some more investigating to do. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately two thirds of the world's population has something called lactase non persistence and would likely have trouble digesting this. The other third? Well, it turns out they've got a genetic mutation that allows their lactase production to persist. So, being able to digest lactose into your adult years is actually the exception, not the norm. This genetic mutation can be traced back geographically to populations that relied more heavily on the domestication of herds, where drinking milk provided an evolutionary advantage. But that's not even the whole picture. Our ability to digest milk isn't just related to our genetics, it's also linked to our epigenetics. But what is epigenetics? Epigenetically altered in utero? Epigenetics. Epigenetics. Epigenetics refers to how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affects the way your genes are expressed. Let me break it down. You may have heard that your DNA makes up who you are, and it does. Your DNA is the molecule that holds all the instructions that make you, you. The epigenome, however, is a set of molecular markers brought on by your environment that tell certain genes to turn on or off. So it doesn't change your actual DNA sequence but it does change the way it's read. Think of your body as a massive kitchen and your DNA are the recipes for different dishes. Epigenetics is like the chef who decides whether to make that recipe and how to make it. We're firing 76 beefs, 34 chickens, okay? 12 french fries, 12 mash, now. So how does this relate to milk? Milk, milk. Well, the gene in charge of creating lactase gradually accumulates certain types of these markers throughout life in a process called epigenetic aging. This causes the gene to slowly be turned off as we get older. Scientists are still learning a lot about these epigenetic factors, and the more we know could actually help increase our understanding of genetically linked diseases like cancer or neurodegenerative disorders. All this to say, if you're one of the lucky 30% with that genetic mutation, well, congrats and enjoy the cheese. As for the rest of us, well, at least we've got these little guys. Let me just take a lactose pill. Can you digest theory? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and by the way, that super cheesy mac and cheese was a hit. That's really good. That's really good. Is it cheddar? And Greer. Mmm, divine. No, I told you it was casserole. It's no, it's mac and no, it's no, not it's a casserole. casserole. No, this is casserole. No, it's not a casserole. It is a mac and cheese. It is this a mac and cheese. Is this is not a casserole. It's a mac and cheese.